Hi guys, it's Nancy and I have some new products as part of the Spellbinders uh, release and I wanted to see if I could turn some Christmas release into a Halloween card. I don't know. We'll see if it's going to be successful or not. So we have this witch die, which I've already die cut out. You can see she's flying along there. So we're going to save her, but I wanted to show you guys some other parts of this die. So not only, I'm just going to use this part of the silhouette, but I wanted to show you, you can layer her up. There is also uh, another part of her hat. There are some um, parts of her shoes. And then there is um, the pumpkin. And if you wanted to make the pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. So this, these are all of the parts that come with this, which it is item S3525. All right, so that is available. Um, obviously, because of being on design team, I don't have the official packaging, but you'll be able to find that on the website. And then I have a new better press plate. So I will show you guys that. And I just die cut that out of black cardstock. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. This is the new better press plate called Birch Trees and Friends. And it comes with birch tree backgrounds, this cute little fawn, and some birds. So obviously it was designed to make a nice woodlands scene. You have the registration plates, and the registration plates allow you to line up different layers so you can make a very wooded scene if you wanted a lot of trees or just a few trees and do different colors. And then you have these are dies. So these are the better press plates. And again, you can foil these or ink them. These are dies. So dies are always this copper color. They cut out. Better press plates are this silver color and these press with ink or foil. Okay. Cut, ink, or foil. Okay. So these will cut out the fawn or the birds. So we are going to be doing the better press with them. And then this is your guide or template. But for first thing is we need to make a background. So I have my Lisa Horton interference inks. And this is Sweet Treat, which is a shimmer ink. And it starts on yellow or will switch to pink if you're in dark color ink. And then we have this kind of Galaxy Dream, which is a navy and will switch to a purpley color. And we're going to work with the lighter colors. And I kind of want to create almost like this moon I guess I should have started with a lighter color, but we just want this off to this side here. Not too much of it, just a light effect here. We want it to look like a night scene. So very, very little of this. That's it. Tiny, tiny bit of that. And then I'm going to grab my very big, my Supra Mama brush here. Big old brush. I love these brushes because I want the rest of this to kind of be a dark color, right? So big mama brush there for that. They're so fluffy. Fluffy, fluffy brush, okay? And this is the Spellbinders um, Better Press Paper. And I just cut it down to five and a half by four and a quarter because we are going to better press on this. But this is going to be our background because we want this to be a night scene. And I'm using my glass mat and starting off the mat. And we're going to darken this to be our night scene. Off the paper, onto the paper. And because we're using a nice fluffy brush here, we're not going to have any kind of blending marks. You're seeing how that paper takes the ink. Giving us that nice dark forest look. Night scene, right? Spooky witch, but nighttime look here. Off the paper, onto the paper. Do not start in the middle of your paper. That's how we get those streaky results. You can always add more ink. And 
and then just going from the edges into the center. We want that moonlit look. So we're, again, where I have that yellow, we're just kind of avoiding that and letting that look like moonlight coming into our forest. And this is a pigment ink, so it does, you know, it's kind of tacky, which is fine. It also works very well for your letter pressing. If you wanted to use it for letter pressing, I've used it. It looks very pretty with the shimmer in there as well. So that's fine. All right, there's our background. So now we're done with that. Just going to wipe the desk down here, and we're going to get our letter press out. Okay, guys, I also wanted to share with you that I ordered these from scrapbook.com. These are the larger sticky grid sheets. I'll link these down below for you, too. Um, it's item 664927, but I'll link the scrapbook.com link. Um, but these are larger, and you can see they're gridded. Same easy to use sticky grid sheets. This is my little secret I shared with you guys when the better press came out. Look, look at that. Perfect. And like I said, they're, they, they're good for about five or six uses before they need to be replaced, but it's for me so much easier than using tape and it doesn't rip our paper and the tape doesn't get in the way from and cause indentations on presses. I can't tell you how many people I've seen use tape and then they get indentations on their impressions. So this is what works for me. You use what works for you, but this is my little secret I share with you guys. Look at that. Perfect placement. Okay, so now we have our sticky grid, and this is the temporary adhesive. You do not want the permanent sticky grid. Okay, now you choose if you want to line the guide up and line your trees up. I'm not going to do that. We're, we're just making our own little forest of trees here. Obviously, there is trees that have more branches, trees that are sparse in branches. If you want to add your birds, I'm going to assume this is supposed to be a spooky, scary forest. It would have been cool if they gave us a couple of owls, but they did not. They gave us like little sparrows or cardinals or whatever. If you want to cut out some, uh, what do you call it, of the, uh, the deer. You can do that, but you can move these trees around. Like there's a branch over here that sticks out. You make it any way you want. It is your own forest of fun here. All right, so this is gonna be my little forest. And I have my background. All right, now for inks, I showed you guys the sneak peek. I'm going to use the new uh, rustic brown ink here. So in the new inks, these are the woodlands. You're going to get, which I said before, I wish there was green. We now have green. Laurel, pine, and spruce are your three new green inks. And we get one new brown ink, which is rustic. So I'm going to use Rustic to ink these up. And again, you kind of want to squiggle as you put your ink down. They always come a little dry, so I do recommend always getting the reinkers. And new inks tend to sell out pretty quickly, so get your reinkers. Because these are tiny little ink pads, which have an advantage. One, they're easy to hold. Two, you don't get as much of the inking on the outsides as you do with bigger ink pads. And three, like I said, they dry out pretty quickly because of the formulation of this ink. 
Um, it's an archival ink, which is what you want because um, you want that ink to stay in place in case you color over your images with any kind of dye-based markers or anything. You don't want that ink to bleed. You want an archival ink. So that's why you want the reinkers for this. You don't want to use an ink that's going to move. Um, we have some placement here where it's kind of slid a little bit. So I'm just going to use my nail and push that back into place. This is a base magnetic platform, so it is designed to hold these in place. And again, for my foiling folks, these are designed to foil. So again, this is a, a you know, holiday themed. I know it's not holiday per se, but winter themed. So you can foil these. So this plate, I think, is going to be very, very popular. Even though I'm kind of using it in a Halloween theme, I do not make Halloween cards traditionally when I saw this plate I immediately thought about the witch and thought oh that would look really cool to make a forest theme background and put that witch flying over and they do kind of the lids do kind of lock in place as you can see there I kind of had to get that open and you do have some working time. It's not like this ink dries. You have some working time to get in there and clean your mess up. It's not drying like, oh no, I need to hurry up and get that done. You have a little bit of time here. Clean up your plate a little bit. All right. Now let's run this through. And a good thing, again, because we have a nature theme, if I don't have full coverage on my ink, I'm not going to fret. It's going to have a very organic look. But a lot of times that means either A, you didn't put enough ink on your plate, or B, you don't have enough shims. I only have one shim in my plate. You can see I have very good coverage there. But you want to check your Mylar shims. I only have one Mylar shim in here. It comes with three shims, so if you're not getting good coverage, check your shims. You might need to add extra shims. A lot of people are concerned about the staining on their plates. I just use Ordinary Stamp Cleaner, Ultra Clean. You can pick that up at stamp shows. You can use um, the Ink on 3 Stamp Cleaner works really well, um, but any kind of stamp cleaner works well. It's okay if your plates stain, you guys. It's just like when our stamps get stained. It's not going to hurt anything. Do not freak out because you're plates get stained or your stamps get stained that's part of using your tools okay does not hurt anything because they're stained just use a little um, warm soap and water to clean them does not hurt anything look my better press is very well loved and stained it works great all right now look there is our forest background now I can change the placement of these trees now and move them and stamp in a lighter ink. And by stamping in a lighter ink, it'll give the illusion that this is a denser forest and push this back and press it again. And that's why they give you a guide. So if I wanted to do this again and stamp in the gray ink, which I think I'm going to do here. So I'm going to leave my paper where it's at and just move just do these three but I'm going to use the gray better press so we have thunder it's an interesting name thunder so we're going to use that and I'm just going to go very light with this ink. I'm not going to go too heavy with this. Just doing three of them. Left my paper on... The better press pad and I'm gonna run 
on that one. All right, so you can see kind of the gray filled in. Oh, that one did right on top of that one. But you get the idea there. Probably should have moved that one to there, but it's okay at this point. But you get the idea. You can see how that gray fills that in. Another trick I learned is you can actually put that there and then put your platform over top. Where you want it, press down and then put your plate, because I have not inked it yet. And that would be where I want it. And now ink it. All right, so there you can see we have our forest. You can add more trees if you want to. I'm gonna stop right there. But there you can see how we just inked our background. Again, using Spellbinders Better Press Paper. This is the 118 pound standard better press paper. I cut it down from the full size eight and a half by 11 to five and a half by four and a quarter using the Lisa Horton interference inks in Galaxy Dream and Sweet Treat using the new Birch Trees and Friends, just using the Birch Trees and then using the new witch, we're gonna apply her. And now we're just gonna attach it to a card front. And again, there are additional dies if you wanted to add to her hat, her shoes, and add a little jack-o'-lantern, you could do that as well. There we go, very simple, easy to do. Turned what would be, again, I think it's supposed to be a holiday themed card into a Halloween card. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Adding what would be, again, what should be a Christmas card into a Halloween card. All of these items can be found in the Spellbinders shop. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments. I will answer them for you. Check out the new Better Press inks as well. 
have the Spellbinders link for you down below in the description. If you had fun watching me make this, don't forget the thumbs up. Would love to have you as a subscriber on my channel as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.